see underwater. That's if you can see them without getting soaked. Mm. Now that calls for a little seaside ingenuity. There's nothing that Genevieve and I like doing better than a bit of exploring. Look at all the stuff going on in these rock pools. Each one is a self-contained underwater world. When the tide is high, it fills the pools up. When it goes out, whatever little critters are in there are stuck until it comes back again. It's just amazing what you can find by poking around in rock pools. Mollusks, starfish, crabs, and shells. It's fantastic to see what's on the surface, but there's probably a lot more going on in the deeper water. But how can we see in there? And how can we catch stuff? Surely there must be an easier way than getting our clothes wet. Hmm. There's not exactly a lot of bits and pieces we can use to make things with here, but I do have a plan. <laughs> Balloons are like little cushions of air. I wonder if they're strong enough to support my weight. Stand back guys, I'm going to walk on air. This is what I call comfy footwear. <laughs> Very fun, but I'm not beaten yet. If I sit on it, my weight is spread more evenly. Okay then. Maybe I need some more balloons. That might be the go. Start blowing. Bombs away! <laughs> ah, back to the drawing board. I've got an idea. Let's try something. Hold steady everyone. How cool is this gonna be? Hey, what do you know? I'm sailing on a sea of balloons. When Blake puts his foot on a balloon, it takes all his weight, which is too much. When he's on the table, his weight is being spread evenly over many balloons, so they don't pop. I wonder if we could all get on board. Come on! <laughs> Time my coin collection had a bit of a cleanup. That didn't make it shinier. That didn't help either. How to get rid of stains? Okay, so what I need is a bowl, a jug, a teaspoon, some vinegar, and some salt. Start by half filling the jug with vinegar. Pour it into the bowl. Add a couple of teaspoons of salt. Give it a really good stir. We're ready for the test. I'll give it a few minutes. Maybe a few minutes more. Cool! It's clean! And it only took about 20 minutes. 
The dirty coins are covered with a layer of oxygen and copper molecules, called copper oxide. The salt and vinegar combine to make an acid mixture that really attacks that copper oxide. Now for the rest of my collection. Wow! I reckon Margot will be able to see what's on those coins much better soon. I wonder if she and Genevieve will have the same success trying to see into their rock pool. Genevieve and I want to find out what lives deeper in these rock pools. But we don't want to get wet. So I've come up with this. These nets are easy to throw together. Just get hold of a loop of wire. Pick up a spare pair of tights. Bend a bit of wire into a loop. Cut the legs off the tights. You won't need them. Sew both leg holes up and attach the waist of the tights to the wire. Add a handle for a bit of extra reach and tape it up. Mightn't look that elegant, but this is our access to an underwater world. Let's see what's down there. Hmm, this is trickier than I thought. Our net is great for catching things, but we can't really see what we're doing under the water. We need something else. Listen up, Rocketeers. We're going to put a rocket on the moon. No, I mean we're going to be the first to put a rocket on that moon. Go on. See who can build a rocket that can make the distance and hit the target. Ah, going for a slimline rocket body. Don't forget to decide where to put the fins. Ah, getting creative with the fins in the middle. Great, seal the top with tape so you can blow it into orbit. Ah, using sticky tape for a bit of extra weight. Around the middle, I see. Okay, launch time. Green rocket, launch. Pink rocket, launch. Red rocket, launch. Yay, we have a moon landing. Green, that sticky tape in the middle made it too heavy. Pink, fins in the middle obviously didn't work. And red, weight and fins in just the right spot. Well done! Now we've made history in our own backyard. That should be long enough for my coin collection to look dazzling. Yep, they're all looking pretty shiny. I wonder if they'll get even shinier if I leave the salt and vinegar on them. I'll leave half of them with the vinegar and salt on. The rest, I'll give a bit of a rinse. There we go. They look pretty clean, that's for sure. Well, the rinsed ones are still shiny. But hey, look at the ones with salt and vinegar on them. They're worse than before. When the coins are exposed to the air, the salt and vinegar mixture makes it easy for copper atoms to join with the oxygen from the air and chlorine from the salt to make a new greeny-blue coating called malachite. Oh dear, I'm worse off than when I started. Back to the salt and vinegar bath for you. Hot dogs, my favourite. She just doesn't understand. Maybe Priscilla needs to know how big a stomach is. Stay right there. We'll make a pretend stomach out of leftover plastic bags. Now if I can just remember this from school. That's a start. Then we need another wider one. Now we need about five long ones. But 
That's about how long his stomach is. Now for the journey of Harry the hot dog. When we eat, Harry travels from our mouths about 30 centimetres down the esophagus to our stomachs. The stomach is the first stage of digestion. Acidic juices start breaking down the food. From the stomach, Harry starts his long trek down the small intestine. The small intestine is actually pretty long, about four or five metres in a kid. It's where all the goodness is absorbed out of the food. Harry's nearly there, just the large intestine to go. The large intestine is about a metre long. It takes any water out. Anything left is just waste and it gets kicked out, well, out the back door. Oh, yep, that's Dirty Harry, all right. He's come a long way and it happens every day in every one of us. Right, maybe room for one more. That was the grossest thing I've ever seen on Backyard Science. Yeah, that's about as low as we get. Unless, perhaps, we need to get to the bottom of a rock pool. Genevieve is out looking for some stuff that we can use to make a pair of underwater eyes. That's how we're going to look deep into rock pools. But I've already found what we need. Old milk bottles and a roll of finger. Start by cutting off the tops. Keep the handle, that'll be useful. Then, do the same with the bottom. Clean wrap over the bottom end. And all held in place with some red tape. Pretty simple, really. But does it work? Only one way to find out. Wow, this is good! You can actually see through the cling wrap really clearly. Look what's down there. Okay, so I can see some things, but how do we catch them? Looks like we'd better combine it with the net. Then we have eyes and hands. Wow, there's some fascinating creatures down there. We'll have to put them back though, and they'll be there for anyone else to see. If they know how to look. My ambition is to be in pictures. Moving pictures. But what should I be exactly? A famous actress. A brilliant director. A genius writer. A deal-making producer. I know, an award-winning cameraman. Maybe not. Hmm, so many choices. But I don't have any money. Hey, what about a cartoonist? How do they make cartoons? If I draw a picture on this card, I should be able to make it move. If I'm going to make a cartoon, most of the drawing has to be the same. First, I'll do an outline in pencil. Now to go over it in pen. The pen leaves an imprint, so I can make my next drawing identical. I'm going to have some fun with that missing arm, but first I have to do more drawing. I'm about to create a masterpiece. But I don't think trees are really my thing. I want something wilder. How about I make my own oil paints? If I put a bit of this linseed oil in with the paint, let's see. Now, I know oil floats on water, so I'm going to make a floating painting. Brilliant! It looks amazing! Now I wonder, can I save my painting? What'll happen if I put paper on top? Perfect! 
I've caught the image. And when you dry them, you can hang them in the finest gallery. Joseph always wants to show me how strong he is. But I think this time I can show him he's just full of hot air. Hang on, I've got a better test than arm wrestling. This won't be as simple as it looks. I bet you can't blow the paper into the bottle. He looks pretty confident, doesn't he? Harder! Go on, blow! Come on, Masu! Pretty pathetic, strong man. The air you blow flies past the paper and hits the bottom of the bottle. This increases the air pressure inside the bottle. When the compressed air rushes out, it pushes the paper out with it. Which goes to prove that you really are full of hot air. <laughs> Margot's right. That's impossible. But anything's possible in the world of cartoons. Let's see how Sophie's blockbuster is coming along. Finished. Twelve cards, all with a stick man on. May as well give him some eyes. Now for the missing arm. I'll make sure each one is in a slightly different position. Time to check how it's working. He's waving at me. Why don't I change his expression as well? Time to bind the book together. Now for the fun bit. Yay, my first cartoon. I'm going to call it... Stick Man Wave. A cartoon works because our eyes and brain hold onto images for a fraction of a second after the real image has disappeared. That means if you can get a second image up quickly, they seem to blend together. And that's all a cartoon does. It keeps replacing images before you have time to register the change. So it all looks part of the same picture. Hey, I just had another idea. This is the best part of making a cake, putting the decorations on it. This sieve is great. The icing sugar is coming out really fine. But I bet that water can't get through the sieve. Come outside and I'll show you. Watch this. Not bad, huh? It's because of surface tension. When water comes into contact with air, it pulls together as if it were forming a skin. That means that each little opening in the sieve is so well sealed that air can neither flow in nor water flow out. Wait, there's one more thing. Watch what happens if I lift the bottle just a little bit. <laughs> Come on, cheer up. The cake's pretty good. Here we go, one raw egg, and making sure the water's cold first, one hard boil. Let's see if Ty can tell the difference. Can you tell which is which? Oh, I think I've forgotten myself. No, don't smash it, I know a better way. Just give it a spin. Did you see that? Watch. When I stop the egg with my finger, then quickly let it go, it starts spinning again. I reckon this is the raw egg. 
Yep, I'm right. In a raw egg, the runny yolk and white inside will move separately to the shell. Unlike the egg in the cooked shell, which is solid, it moves with the shell. When the raw egg spins, the soggy insides keep on spinning even when the shell stops. The motion of the insides forces the shell to start spinning again. So this one should be hard boiled. Here's your treat, Bonzo. <laughs> now I just need to teach Bonzo to peel his egg. <laughs> Not a wild creature in sight. They're hiding from things that want to eat them. Time to go and look for some. Come on. What is she wearing? She's dressed for a disco. We'll never see any animals now. They'll spot you a mile off. You could have worn something to blend in with your surroundings. Green, for instance. It's all about not being seen. Let me show you how animals do it. First, help me cut out some moths. Now colour them in. What? I don't think that's a great moth colour. Look. If I put our moths in a tree, yours are easy to see, but mine blend in with the natural colours. Yours would have been eaten in an instant. Making themselves invisible is how many animals protect themselves from other animals that want to eat them. Many animals take on the colours and patterns of the plants and rocks around them. It's called camouflage. So some animals can even sneak up on you. <laughs> now this is really clever camouflage. I'll bet you can hardly see me. And I can't wait for the finale of Sophie's movie. Do you want to try something really complicated? It's called... Wait for it! A Sophie trope. We're going to use it to make a moving picture with. Don't worry, this will work. We're going to make drawings and rotate them on the tub. First I measure out a piece of paper, the exact diameter of the tub. It's like a bendy ruler, so I can mark up the tub. Now, cut some slits. Perfect! Because of my careful measuring, all the slits are the same size and evenly spaced. Now for the cartoon! This time, I'll move Stickman's legs around. Our cartoon's nearly ready. Just stick the pictures between the slits. Now all we need is a thumbtack. Light, camera, action! And now wait until it's at the right speed. Yeah, he's moving! A Sophie trope uses the same principle of moving images that a camera does. If the second image is in a slightly different position from the first image, to the eye it looks like the object is actually moving. I think I'll call my latest masterpiece, Stick Man Jump. Looks pretty good, doesn't it, Jason? Yeah, but it's not that easy being animated, I must say. See, See you, you next time. time.